Welcome to the deep dive. Today, we're uh, really getting into something interesting, the uh, surprising rise of insects as, well, food, as a mainstream protein source even. It sounds a bit sci-fi, doesn't it? Yeah. But it's happening. It really is. And if you're keen to understand the sort of deeper trends shaping our world and, you know, want to get up to speed quickly, you are definitely in the right place. Okay, but before we properly unpack this whole bugs as food thing, just a quick note. Go for it. For more amazing insights like what we're about to discuss, you should definitely check out Mind Expansion Daily. Seriously, it's um, it's a great resource for information that genuinely expands your world. Yeah, good stuff over there. And while you're thinking about it, please do like and subscribe to Mind Expansion Daily. It really helps us reach more curious people just like you. Absolutely. It helps us keep doing these deep dives. Right. And if you find what we're sharing today valuable, if it makes you think, maybe consider supporting our mission. You can buy us a coffee super easy. The link is right there in the description. We appreciate that. Definitely. And after you've listened, we genuinely want to hear from you. Leave a comment. Tell us if you agree or, you know, disagree with our take on this. Yeah. What are your thoughts? And please let us know where you're listening from. We're really trying to build a global community here. Okay. So the topic today, entomophagy. Sounds fancy. Eating insects, right? Exactly. It's actually an ancient practice, but it's getting this very modern twist. We're focusing specifically on how a big discount supermarket, Aldi, is looking at this. Aldi. Interesting. I wouldn't immediately connect them with, well, crickets. Well, back in 2022, Aldi UK started seriously looking into insect-based products. They even featured Yumbug's Cricket Meal Kits on a Channel 4 show. Ah, Okay, so it's not just theoretical. Not at all. So our mission today is really to explore what this move by Aldi means. Is it signaling a bigger shift towards sustainable protein? And what does it actually mean for our plates and maybe even the planet? Right. Because when you say eating insects, I think for a lot of us, particularly in the West, you immediately picture some kind of, I don't know, reality TV dare. That's the common image, yeah. But we need to challenge that perception, right? Because this isn't just some weird fad. It's a, it's a global thing with deep roots. Uh, absolutely. We're talking over 2 billion people worldwide who regularly eat insects. Think Asia, Africa, South America. Wow, 2 billion. Yeah, yeah. it's huge. You see, fried crickets is treat food in Thailand or uh, chapulins. Those are grasshoppers in Mexico. They're really popular. So it's totally normal elsewhere. For a massive part of the world, yes. It's a dietary staple, not some experiment. Okay, so setting aside the weirdness factor for a moment, what's the actual appeal? Why are people leading them, and why is Aldi interested? Well, this is where it gets really compelling. The benefits are pretty profound, both for us nutritionally and for the environment. Okay, let's start with nutrition. Right. So insects are incredibly nutrient-dense. Take crickets. They're about 65 to 70% protein by weight. 70%. That's that's more than steak, isn't it? Often, yes. Yeah. Significantly more. And they pack more iron than spinach, more calcium than milk. Seriously. Wow. Yeah. And it's not just crickets. Mealworms are great, too. Good source of fiber. And those important omega-3 fatty acids. Like you get in fish. Comparable levels, yeah. Just to give you some hard numbers from the sources. 100 grams of crickets. That's about 65 grams of protein. 8 grams of fiber. And get this. 20 times the vitamin B12 you'd find in beef. 20 times. Okay, that's impressive. And mealworms, around 50 grams of protein per 100 gram, plus those omega-3s. Yeah. So nutritionally, they're, well, powerhouses. Okay. Nutritionally, it's a strong case. Yeah. But you mentioned the environment. That feels like the even bigger story here, potentially. I think so, too. That's where the contrast with traditional livestock is just stark. Let's talk water. Right. Livestock uses a lot of water. A ton. Crickets need about one gallon of water to produce a pound of protein. Just one gallon. Okay. And beef? Beef needs around 1,850 gallons for that same pound of protein. Whoa. Okay, one versus 1850. That's not even close. Not even remotely close. Then you look at greenhouse gases. Insects. Yeah. Almost negligible emissions. Beef produces something like 80 times more methane. 80 times. Methane's a potent greenhouse gas, too. Exactly. And then there's land and feed. An FAO report from 2023 found insect farming uses about 90% less land and 50% less feed compared to, say, pork. 90% less land. It all adds up. Think about it this way. 
If a family of four swapped just one beef meal each week for an insect-based one, they could save around 650,000 liters of water per year. Just one meal a week, 650,000 liters. That's the potential scale. It really points towards a much, much more sustainable way to get protein. So you've got this incredible nutritional profile, tiny environmental footprint. It seems like a no-brainer. So why aren't we all eating bugs already? What's the big holdup? Ah, well, that brings us neatly to the, uh, the famous ick factor. Right. The mental hurdle. It's the Mount Everest of obstacles, especially in Western cultures. A survey just this year found 60% of Western consumers point to that ick feeling as the main reason they wouldn't try them. 60%? That's a majority. So how do companies like Aldi or Yumbug even begin to tackle that? It's all about marketing and framing. Mm -hmm. They're not putting pictures of whole crickets on the front, usually. Probably wise. Right. They use vibrant packaging. They emphasize the benefits, high protein, sustainable. They use appealing flavor names like smoky BBQ or teriyaki. It's about shifting the focus away from the bug part. So distract with deliciousness and eco-friendliness. Pretty much. It's trying to bypass that initial ew, creepy crawly reaction. <laughs> it's clever psychology, really. Reframing it not as eating a bug, but as eating a sustainable protein snack or an adventurous flavor experience. Is it working? Are people becoming more open to it? There are signs of a shift, especially generationally. While many are still hesitant, about 35% of millennials say they are open to trying insect foods. Okay, so younger people are maybe less squeamish. Or perhaps more driven by sustainability concerns or just more adventurous eaters. It suggests the resistance might be softening over time. And didn't another UK supermarket try this already? Yes, good point. Sainsbury's actually started stocking roasted crickets way back in 2018. So Aldi wouldn't be the absolute first major grocer to dip their toes in. Which kind of brings us to the real test, doesn't it? Data is one thing, marketing is another, but what happens when someone actually tries them? Exactly. The proof is in the pudding. Yeah. Or the protein bar. Well, funny you should say that because for this deep dive, I decided I couldn't just talk about it. I had to go on my own little uh, Aldi bug hunt, or at least an inspired by Aldi bug hunt. You actually did it. Brave. Okay. What did you find? Okay, so I couldn't find them in Aldi yet, obviously, but I sourced some similar products online, the kind they might stock. I got a Chopes Cricket Protein Bar chocolate flavor. Cost about $3, 10 grams of protein. Fair protein bar. Seems like a common entry. Yeah. yeah. Seems less intimidating. And then I got a bag of Jiminy's Sesame and Cumin Mealworms. Little crunchy things marketed as a snack. About yeah. $2.50 for a small bag. Mealworms, too. You went all in. <laughs> what were the reactions like, even just buying them or telling people? Well, even just picturing buying them in a store, I can imagine the checkout reactions. Based on things I've seen, you'd get the curious teenager maybe taking a picture, like, whoa, cool. Right. And then maybe the older shopper behind them giving a bit of a shudder, muttering, bugs, good grief. It really captures that divide we were just talking about. Oh, absolutely. So the moment of truth, mm -hmm. you got them home. What was the verdict, the taste test? Okay, deep breath. I tried the cricket bar first. It's made with cricket flour, so it's all ground up. Ah, uh, no visible legs then. Thank goodness no, honestly. No. It tasted like a dense brownie. A bit dry maybe, but with this distinct nutty undertone. Not bad at all, really. Huh, a nutty brownie. Okay, and the mealworms. Those were roasted and seasoned. They were definitely crunchy. The texture was kind of like maybe savory popcorn, but with this earthy umami flavor from the cumin and sesame savory popcorn interesting yeah. comparison yeah again and surprisingly okay so then i got brave and made a few friends try them small panel very informal were you the only one who didn't mind them get this 80 percent of them said they'd eat them again 80 percent. wow okay. oh what? that's higher than i might have guessed right it really surprised me too and it sort of lines up with some broader polling we found there was a poll on x you know twitter back in 2022 huge sample twenty three thousand votes look at that show it was split 40% intrigued, 60% repulsed. So still more hesitation than enthusiasm overall. But 40% intrigued is still significant. Exactly. And a more recent X poll just this year, specifically asking Aldi customers, 15,000 votes there, showed 30% would be willing to try insect snacks, especially if they were cheap, like under $2. Okay, so maybe price is a factor too, if it's a low risk purchase. Could be. It really highlights how presentation and expectation shape everything. If it looks like a normal bar or tastes like a familiar snack. That initial ick can be overcome, at least for some people. Mm -hmm. We see that online too. Comments ranging from, hey, these taste like pork scratchings, <laughs> which is a compliment, believe it or not. Right. All the way to, 
absolutely no way am I eating bugs. Ever. It's real spectrum. But there's a potential pitfall here too, isn't there? With hiding the bugs in flour and bars. Yes, transparency mm -hmm. is crucial. Mm -hmm. While using powders helps with acceptance, some research shows only about 20% of insect products yep. clearly state the bug content. Only 20%. Yeah, and that can backfire. Another survey found 25% of people felt kind of tricked. The labeling wasn't clear. Mm -hmm. So you need that balance. Make it approachable, but be honest about what's in it. Right. Build trust. Don't want people feeling duped later. Exactly. Long-term adoption needs that trust. So let's zoom out again. If Aldi does make this move, potentially around 2027, like their buyer hinted, hmm. what could that really mean? Is this the tipping point for bugs becoming normal food? It could be a major step towards normalization, yes. Aldi's whole model is about making things affordable and accessible. They reach a huge number of people. A massive number. If they started stocking something like those Yum Bug kits we mentioned, priced around 5 to $7, they could reach, what, potentially 10 million shoppers in the UK every single week? 10 million people seeing cricket kits next to their pasta and cereal. That definitely makes it seem less niche. It brings it right into the mainstream weekly shop, following pioneers like Sainsbury's, but maybe with even bigger impact because of all these scale and price point. So what else needs to happen besides just putting them on shelves to really make entomophagy stick? Well, education is still key. Retailers could do things like in-store tastings. Sprouts Farmer's Market in the U.S. did that. Apparently, it boosted their insect product sales by 30%. Uh, try before you buy. Makes sense. Exactly. And that transparent labeling we talked about, companies like Landish, they put 40 crickets per bar right on the front. It builds confidence. It's upfront about it. Yes, and constantly reinforcing the why, especially the sustainability angle. Remember those water savings? 1,900 liters saved per meal compared to beef. That resonates, particularly with younger shoppers. Like 65% of Gen Z prioritize eco-friendly products. So lean into the green benefits. Definitely. But the implications go even wider than just what's on the supermarket shelf. How so? This is part of a global trend. The edible insect market is growing like crazy 26% a year. You've got Loblaw in Canada selling cricket powder. Ikea has even experimented with insect-based meatballs. Ikea meatballs made for bugs. Okay, now I've heard everything. It shows how seriously different sectors are looking at this. And think about waste. Insect farming can be brilliant for repurposing food waste. Mealworms, for instance, they love organic scraps. So you feed food waste to the mealworms and you eat the mealworms. Kind of a closed-loop system, yeah. It could potentially cut down landfill waste significantly, maybe by 15%. Imagine the impact in cities struggling with huge landfills, like Delhi's Gazapur site. Wow, okay, so it connects to waste management, too. Absolutely. And back to climate. The UN estimated in 2023 that if just 20% of us in the West adopted entomophagy by 2030, it could cut overall agricultural emissions by 5%. 5% just from adding some bugs to our diet. It shows how these seemingly small dietary shifts can have these massive ripple effects across food systems, waste, and the environment. It's all interconnected. Okay, let's try and wrap our heads around this. We've covered a lot of ground. We have. So to quickly recap this deep dive into Aldi and edible insects, we've seen their nutritional giants, crickets, mealworms, packing up to 70% protein. More iron than spinach, more calcium than milk. Right. And environmentally, they're superstars. Tiny water footprint, minimal land use, negligible greenhouse gases compared to traditional meat. Huge savings, especially compared to beef. But that cultural hurdle, the ick factor, it's still very real in the West. So maybe shrinking, especially with younger generations. Exactly. And retailers like Albi, if they move forward around that potential 2027 timeline, could be pivotal in making insects mainstream, helped by smart marketing and accessible pricing. And as my own little taste test showed, once you get past the idea, they can be surprisingly tasty. 80% of my testers were converts, at least temporarily. The power of the palate. So after all that, the big question for you listening, what's your take on eating bugs? Is this looking like the future of food for you, or is that ick factor still a solid wall? It's a fascinating question to ponder about your own habits. It really is. We genuinely want to hear your thoughts, so please drop us a comment below. Agree, disagree, just curious, let us know. And tell us where you're tuning in from. We love seeing our global listener map grow. Please do. And hey, if you found this deep dive valuable today, maybe think about buying us that coffee. The link's right there in the description. Every little bit helps us keep doing this. It really does. 
And finally, for more insights like this, things that make you think about the world a bit differently, make sure you like and subscribe to Mind Expansion Daily. You won't regret it. Lots more great stuff to explore. Definitely. Okay, lots to chew on there. Maybe. Literally. <laughs> Thanks for diving deep with us today.